Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I jump into my episode today, I want to give a shout out to my sponsors at Bathmate. Now, listen up, everybody with a penis, which statistically is 96% of you. Uh, now, penis pumps may sound like a funny concept, but they are actually a great tool to get harder erections and have more intense orgasms. Bathmate is the world's best-selling penis pump, and it uses the power of water to drain blood safely into your penis, which is way more comfortable than using typical air pumps. And right now, Bathmate is offering our listeners 10% off of their order when you go to bathmatedirect.com slash holly. That's bathmatedirect, B-A-T-H-M-A-T-E, direct.com slash holly to get 10% off of your first order. Okay. My guest today is somebody that you guys have been asking me for a long time. She drove all the way from Vegas to be here today. Uh, she's been in the industry for almost two decades. She's a multi-ABN nominated MILF performer with an amazing ass who is not afraid to give her opinions on anything and everything. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Siren Demare. Thank you. Hi. I am super stoked to be here. I'm Finally. so happy you're and here too. And thank you for all the requests, you know, because request over and over and over and see what happens <laughs> yeah and then we ran into each other at xbiz and um i was like oh my god duh like i gotta you know and then we chatted and then it took me like a month to text you and but you know here we but are it today happened. yes it did. yes it did um so i guess you know let's let's start from the beginning as we often do with my guests yes how did you get into porn you got in later than like you know most girls typically do so how did that come about yeah i did i was as one would say in the prime of my life my late 30s and i had always been a model off and on i mean ever since i was 18 mm -hmm. and uh was more you know because i went to school for photography oh, okay so that's kind of how all of that started is we would model for each other yeah. and and uh, help each other out. And I'm going, wow, okay. I like being behind the camera, but being in front of the camera is really fun too. So that kind of started that process. I modeled um, so did more you local. Never, did you never like have aspirations to be a model before? Like, did you not, not find really. that you enjoy being in front of the camera or just it's getting attention from people or? I'm, and everybody is so surprised. I'm actually very shy. And I, so it's like, I don't like drawing attention. Hmm. And the idea of modeling never really hit me. You know, I was kind of one of those kids in high school that like didn't fit into one click, but I had friends in every single one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just kind of how I, I liked my life. But then when the situation arose and then I got the experience of that situation, I'm like, oh, well, yeah, this is actually kind of fun. That's so so started doing um, like a lot of local stuff. So um, wedding shows and other fashion shows and just stills for other photographers that I had met throughout. Um, and then life goes on. I had kids kind of got out of all of that. And then after my second child dropped all the baby weight and my husband, ex-husband was like, hey, you know, would you want to get back into modeling? And I'm like, you know, actually, yeah, that would be fun. You know, I, I look good. I feel good. Sure. And uh, so we started kind of setting up little feelers here and there, but also through that same time we were swinging mm -hmm. and um, having fun with all of that. And then this is going to age me, <clears throat> but we had Yahoo groups. Mm, I, you know what? It's going to age me too because I remember those. <laughs> <laughs> this was, for those of you who don't know, this was even before MySpace. Yeah. Um, but my husband and I had a couple different Yahoo groups. And then when we did the gangbangs and we were into BDSM and the swinging, so we would post pictures and things like that. Um, and then a magazine, you know, as they do, will be like put out ads of moms next door or beaver hunt or you know any mm -hmm. of those so you know my husband was like hey would you would you be interested in like getting some little sexier pictures done and then like send them off and i'm like well yeah absolutely i think that'd be great well in throughout all of that um 
I was discovered short story and then was asked to actually sign for Lighthouse Agency. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, like vaguely remember they were a lot. Seymour Butts owned them. Okay. And I was like, I get more sex. (laughs) (laughs) And he was like, yeah. And I go, and I get paid for that sex and he's like yeah and i'm like oh well fuck yeah that's that's a (laughs) no-brainer so here i am 36 37 37 and i get into (laughs) porn wow wow that's so funny it's interesting how your story like parallels mine but the opposite so i actually grew up wanting to be a model um and like i you know would i told my mom i wanted to be a model and all this stuff and i just like didn't really have what it took. And my mom was like, you should be a photographer. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy photography. And yeah. growing up, I mean, I, I grew up with a family of teachers. Mm. So it's like, I've got that disposition mm-hmm. to be a teacher, but I've I've seen the everything that they go through. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, that's just not for me. But I've always been very artistic, too, Mm -hmm. which led me, you know, started taking photography classes in high school and then led me to that side of it. Yeah. But then ended up in front and kind of stayed in front now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's funny. I definitely prefer to be behind the camera because then I like started modeling sort of not intentionally, like, you know, in my 40s, you know, just having an OnlyFans. And I'd still like. I definitely prefer being behind the camera. Here I found as you get older and not to separate each decade, but really mm-hmm. to separate each decade, your interests are completely different. Yeah. Your personality is different, mm-hmm. all of that. So you turning 40 and wanting to be more behind the camera again, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was just, uh, you're right though. I mean, the way that, cause it just feels like such an old, like to be, you know, People were like, well, why didn't you do this when you were 20? And I was like, well, first of all, like, I just, I don't know. Like, my photography career was taking off at the time. Right. Um, and I don't know. I guess, like, it was weird. I had, like, more confidence when I was older, which is strange, yes. right? No, 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 not you know? at all. I am full into the the wisdom hits you later mm-hmm. in life. And mm-hmm. you have to live your life, experience things, make mistakes to be more confident, gain that wisdom and find your true self. Yeah. Yeah. It's like all that, all those really, I think about this often now because as I'm older, I look back and I see all of the, you know, traumas or all of this shit that we went through, all the bad times, Mm -hmm. all of that had to happen. It it did. You know, and I, I think I think about it now because I have a daughter and she's only three. So she's like, you know, got her whole life in front of her and she's got all of those those trials and tribulations and all of those terrible moments, unfortunately, ahead of her, right? Yep. And I have to like let go and let her have her own experience and I can't it's micromanage hard. her life because she has to have those things happen yes. to make her into whoever she's going to be one day. Yes. And so it's just, but, you know, reflecting back on like those moments where you're like, why did this have to happen to me and my life sucks and I oh, wish yeah. I wasn't going through this. Like <laughs> they end up being these like little like moments of you know these these moments you had to have like mm-hmm. they, they end up being um what's the word i'm looking for what's a, a thing that that's good oh well, i mean besides experiences <laughs> accomplishments um <laughs> happy oh times you know no, the hills like, and the valleys like but the un- hills <laughs> unexpected like uh I was going to say gratitude, but that's not it. You also, as you get older, you lose your memory. <laughs> you do. That also happens. <laughs> and, and you're trying to thought. And each time you get pregnant, it gets worse. Oh, my God. <laughs> that whole thing about, like, dropping things all the time when you're pregnant is so true. Absolutely. I dropped everything. Absolutely. It was so weird. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. tripping over stuff. It's crazy. Oh, pregnancy. That's another story. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. Um, so, so let's get back into, uh, your origins. Yeah. So you and your ex-husband were in, into swinging. Yeah. My parents actually did the same. Yeah. Um, so how did you guys get into that? Was that something that you always were into or did it come about later? My ex-husband, I kind of, his parents were swingers <laughs> and here he is. He's a teenager, you know, boy, you know, just getting home, going down to the basement and 
Oh my god, there's mom and dad and a whole bunch of naked people. <laughs> oh, so they were having like parties at the house. Okay, yeah, that didn't happen to me, to be fair. I never so... walked in on those things. Those, they, they, they took that stuff elsewhere. But obviously he took it in stride. Yeah. Um, and so he, he had that experience. I was actually, I mean, I grew up, well, we both grew up in the same town. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to say sheltered, but I was very unaware of the things going on around me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even know about swinging, mm -hmm. you know, lifestyle, BDSM, I mean, none of it, mm -hmm. none of it. And then it was him that was like, because he now had had experience because we met in our late 20s. Um, so he had had previous relationships where they either were a swinger or is in the, the BDSM lifestyle. And he, you know, slowly kind of brought me into the fold mm -hmm. and um, just had me start experiencing some things. And then from there, it just all kind of, I'll say, blossomed. Wow. And took off. Yeah. And then um, you two used to host monthly gangbangs. Is we that did. right? <laughs> we did. So tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> that was um, also, you know, it's like you start going to parties and you meet people that you really like. And um, even I kind of going back to like how my ex-husband started the whole process and when i said we started slow um we started with a three on one <laughs> I, and that even kind of goes into how my career started too but uh i mean that's an airtight it is right it yeah. is but you're dealing with civilians yeah. and they quite don't know what the airtight is now yeah. i do and i'm like man if i would have done that from the get-go i yeah. would probably be even more of a sexual monster than i am now <laughs> but um no you just you start meeting people mm -hmm. and he actually liked the process he would actually have an uh, application and an interview <laughs> process <laughs> i love it with these gentlemen um and he enjoyed that part he liked the hosting and the gangbangs he never participated interesting he played host and then he would fuck me like a total crazed stupid couple after the fact after um, i'm assuming he would watch he would watch he would host he would you know it's like we would have i just get the idea i just get i'm just picturing you like getting banged by all these dudes and like your husband comes over he's like would you like a water i know <laughs> Can I have that kind of that, that <laughs> kind of happened but not really so i mean we treated our gangbangs like a party mm -hmm. so we would have refreshments and food and um but rules like no alcohol mm -hmm. no drugs that kind of thing um and it just again you just meet people he would interview and would be like yep i like you you okay we're having a party this day and you end up building a core group of people yeah um single some were married um most of the time the other halves stayed away mm -hmm. um either i wanted the attention for myself or they would get weird yeah by watching their partners yeah yeah um so that's just and then eventually i would have uh, you know six to eight guys and this is where my husband would kind of kick in because not all guys would be on me at the same time. Mm -hmm. They would literally rotate. So mm -hmm. they'd be watching or they'd snack or, you know, mm -hmm. do all that. And when they're ready to come back in, they come back in mm -hmm. and the other guys would leave. So, yeah. Revolving door. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> That's really fun. <laughs> yeah. So how, how old were your kids at this time? Did you have to like hide this from them or were they out of the house? Or? And when we had the gangbangs, yeah, we would have my aunt and uncle. Mm -hmm. babysit so they weren't mm -hmm. anywhere near because we were in an apartment at the time yeah, so it's yeah. like let's keep that separate of and course, we were very course. good at keeping like the family away from our sexual life yeah and they were young um my youngest was actually still in it was still a baby okay and wow. then my oldest was about th four okay okay so yeah I mean, yeah, I didn't, you know, find about, out about my, like, parents' swinging tendencies, obviously, until much later when, you know, people like Ginger Lynn would tell me about, like, when she came over for dinner and I was asleep upstairs and she was, like, banging someone in the living room. I was, like, I, I was asleep through that. I don't remember. Right. And, I mean, yeah, if you have, like, a friend come over. Yeah. The babies are asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, they don't tend to wake up. Yeah. And, you know, you're quiet. I mean, you're, you know, but yeah. you'll have smaller little get-togethers <laughs> yeah 
And then um, you, so then you moved into the adult industry, right? So how did that come about? Yeah. So after, um, after I was approached and then uh, several months later, you know, came into LA and signed and, you know, it took a a month or two to just kind of get things out there Mm -hmm. and um, had my, you know, my first pro scene, probably yeah, I want to say about two months after I had signed. Okay. You know, got some different pictures, you know, for the site and and then trying to get networking done and being new and not really having any sort of history other than my Yahoo groups and mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but that, that first scene was a lot of fun. It was kind of nerve wracking, but because we would take pictures during the gangbangs. Yeah. I was kind of used to having a camera there. Yeah. And then being a model, I'm used to having a camera like yeah. in front of And you're of obviously people. like don't have a problem having sex in front of other people. Right. Yeah. And that's interesting because most people are either a voyeur or they're an exhibitionist. Mm-hmm. And I'm probably more voyeur than exhibitionist, but I'm both. Mm, interesting. Because you, you kind of pick up the energy from everybody around there yeah. and when you're the one that's having sex. Yeah. Everybody's watching you. You're kind of like, oh, wow. And that's like with gangbangs. I'm like, wow, this is just the best ego trip that any woman can have. Yeah. <laughs> because they're all there for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've yeah. talked to so many girls about, you know, who like gangbangs about that because, you know, obviously most people consider it to be like so degrading and the woman's being abused oh, it's totally and all that. And it's amazing. And I've heard so many women say the, Yes, it's the opposite. It's empowering. So maybe explain that to someone who like can't wrap their head around that idea. Are you, I mean, it really, even with like the lifestyles, mm-hmm. you do have to have a certain personality and a certain frame of mind. Mm-hmm. But like with the gangbangs, I mean, you are the only woman mm-hmm. and you have three men, four men, five men, six men, 10 men. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are there for you. Mm-hmm. They have hard penises. That's for you. Mm -hmm. And you just got to, you know, you take that as a compliment. Mm -hmm. It's not degrading because they're very respectful. They're very responsible. They, I have never had a situation where they've treated me poorly. I mean, out of any of them, my civilian gangbangs, work gangbangs, they've all been just amazing people. And you just you go with it and you I'm an energy vibe person anyway and you just have fun with it and everybody's laughing and having a great time and and go with that it isn't negative it's all positive it's all affirming it's great it's it I mean I just can't say enough about the gangbangs yeah um I've only worked on three gangbangs in my life uh, each one of them, I was hired by the female talent in the scene because she was shooting it for her own production. Mm-hmm. So the first one was Joanna Angel, yes. but I only did the pictures. Mike Quasar uh, shot the video. And then the second one was Riley Reed. Oh, yes. And then the third one was Lisa Ann. Oh, yes. <laughs> like all very like powerful women, very, right? You know, yes. business, like entrepreneurial. And, th- and they set it up. They picked the guys. Like it was their production. They wrote the checks at the end of the day, you know, right. which like. I, I kind of love that Good one on them you for know, that like, too. Yes, you know all these guys are like they bang them, and at the end of the day, Lisa's like, "Here you go, thanks here you for go. your penis. Here you go. Here you, <laughs> yeah. go. you know what I mean? Yes. Like, kind of flips the script yeah. on what most people think that's like. And they were like so much fun because first of all, like I love men, yeah. and I'm very comfortable being in like a large group of men. Like I'm, I'm actually, I think in my career because I've been behind the scenes in the adult industry for so long. Right. There's not a lot of women in that position, especially when I started. Like I'm used to being surrounded by men and I'm totally like fine with it. And yeah, I know I really enjoyed it. And it's it's funny because it's like the off and the on of the scene, right? When it's on, everybody's focusing. The guys are like, you know, you know, fucking the girl hard, slapping her tits and like, like that. Right. right. And then it's like break. And then like everyone's laughing and like talking yeah. about the baseball game. And it's just like, you know what I mean? It's like a party. It's like, it is, but it is yeah, a lot. Really They're is. actually like a lot of fun. Like I had a blast. Yeah. And I kind of wonder, cause you mentioned comfortability, mm-hmm. you know, if, is that part of the reason why some of the women think it's negative or degrading oh, is 100%. they're just not comfortable in that group setting. Yeah. They're better with the monogamy and the one-on-one, right. which is fine. 
Yeah, I think um, everybody projects their own experience onto other people's experiences, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Like we view everything through the lens of our own experience. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where you get a lot of that, that negative feedback on porn because people will see these things that other people do and think, right. I could never do that. Right. I would feel degraded if I was in the middle of that. So therefore, because I feel that way, that person must feel mm -hmm. the same way as I feel because my feelings are the only feelings that I know. <laughs> I can't yes. comprehend feeling that way. So there must be someone yeah. wrong with that person where yeah. it's just like, could we accept that people are different? They have right. different needs and wants and desires and like is it okay like could we be okay with other what other people want to do with their own bodies right and it and that's where socially i've seen humanity yeah go back and forth and back and forth and right now it's very me 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 and i'm i'm having a hard time understanding you mm -hmm. but you know it'll sway back yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i think that's kind of one of the the good things about social media these days that it's really allowed so many different people to have a voice, but it's also been bad because it's allowed so many different people to have a voice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it goes yeah. both ways. Yeah. Like on one hand, I think that it's made for a possibly, maybe I'm being optimistic, but like a more understanding world in terms of like the younger generation and seeing like things tolerance from other people, tolerance. what I'm seeing but as then, the younger kids. Yes, but then I've also them. seen, and maybe this is more, it'd be interesting to know whether or not this is an older demographic. It's either like more tolerance or polarization, right? It's like one of the two. And that is true because like I, have, I have seen both and yeah. it's not generational. Yeah. Um, it, it really it probably just stems with your personality, how you were raised, mm -hmm. how your parents were. Um, I, you know, there is something to say about nature, but nurture does play a lot in who we become as an adult. And I think also too, your life experiences and do you get out of your own bubble? Yeah. Because I think a lot of these people, you know, live in their own echo chamber, mm -hmm. right? And they don't travel. And they don't see how other yeah. people live and they don't listen to how other people live right. and they only associate and talk to people who like feed you know back into what their beliefs are and mm -hmm. it just creates this feedback loop yeah um i think you know that's probably that's why a lot of coastal cities tend to be more cosmopolitan tend to be more liberal yes because you're getting people from other countries to come in coming and, in yep. and there's more like exchange of ideas and that yeah kind of thing. yeah and i think that's where like the internet has probably hurt us mm. socially yeah because we're we're so used to our phones mm -hmm. we're so used to our computers and and that's how we chat which mm -hmm. on the other side is great because now we can chat with people that are clear across the world mm -hmm. that we couldn't, but I'm afraid that it's now lessening the actual connection, the 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 person face to face yeah. contact. And also too, well, on that end, yes, because when you try to argue with someone on Twitter and it's just a text back and forth. You miss the tone. You do. You miss the humanity behind Absolutely. that voice. Yep. You miss that, you know, having a face-to-face -face conversation with somebody about something yeah. is so different than even like, I mean, you know, we've all had that experience where like someone sends us a text and we misread it. Absolutely. We read it in a different way. Absolutely. They didn't intend. Yep. Because we're like, we're projecting our own voices onto it as opposed to then, and then they call us. And they're like, no, this is what I meant. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. And now it sounds different. Yeah. Um, and I think also too with social media, the problem is, is you know, we get stuck in these algorithms, right? So first of all, we only, we generally only follow the people who believe what we believe. Mm -hmm. um, but also like the algorithms pick up on that. Like YouTube's very guilty of this and it feeds us the videos. Oh, the YouTube rabbit hole. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yes. Did you see that documentary? Uh, I haven't, but I'm going to have to, but because it is so true. Yeah, and it feeds us the yeah. things that we watch, so we become all. Then all we see is all the things that we believe, and we're not open to other yeah. ideas and other perspectives. Yeah. And it just, and that's how you know people yeah. get like radicalized. I'm so happy with the invention of the emojis, because <laughs> I'm I'm very straightforward and <clears throat> maybe a little too blunt sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's like, now I always make sure, okay, let's make, you know, let's put this little emoji. So it puts in like my emotion 
Yeah. So there aren't any miscommunications or misreadings. So <laughs> it's so true because I'm the same. I'm often busy and I'm in, I'm in between doing a lot of things. Yeah. So I'll, I often voice text too. And I'm like, yeah, I can't make it. And it's not like, I can't make it, motherfucker. It's like, I'm so sorry. I can't yeah. make it. But like, I don't have the time to write, I'm so sorry. Right. Or, you know, like, I can't write. I don't have time to write this whole like yeah. lovely thing. So I'm like, if I don't put in the little like tongue out emoji, they're right. going to think I'm mad or yeah. an exclamation point yep. at the end. Like when you respond to someone and say, sure, if you just write sure with no how punctuation, you know how, yes, it, it sounds like a sure. Uh -huh. But if I write back, sure, with an exclamation point, it's like, sure. And see, I do exclamation points now. You know? More than any other punctuation. It's like either no punctuation at all or the exclamation point and a big smile emoji. Yeah, it's, just like, it's just like these little nuances of human communication. Yeah. It's just bizarre. Um, anyways, well. I know we, we of, sidetracked. We did sidetrack. Uh, we're going to track sidetrack now into yes. a commercial break. And then we're going to come back on track afterwards. <laughs> So stick around, guys. We'll be right back. Hey there, listeners. It's Holly Randall here. As a director in the adult industry, I know a thing or two about what makes a performance unforgettable. And let me tell you, confidence and stamina are key. That's why I'm so excited to introduce you to Blue Chew. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so you know they work. Whether you're looking to enhance your performance or just add a little extra spice to your love life, Blue Chew has got you covered. But what I love about Blue Chew is how easy it is to get started. You sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once approved, you receive your prescription within days. It's all done online, so there's no awkward visits to the doctor or waiting in line at the pharmacy. Plus, Blue Chew is chewable, which means that it works fast. You can be ready whenever the moment strikes. And trust me, your partner will notice the difference. So if you want to bring your A-game to the bedroom, head over to bluechew.com and use promo code HOLLY to get your first month for free. You only pay $5 for shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code HOLLY, for a free month of incredible confidence and unforgettable moments. Remember, Blue Chew is here to help you perform your best when it matters the most. Give it a try and thank me later. All right, everybody, we are back. So we started talking about your beginnings in porn, and we ended up talking about emojis. <laughs> right. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> but uh, so tell me a little bit more about your first scene. Like, do you remember who it was with? I do. Uh, it was Richard Mann. Okay. For um, It was Bubble Butt Bonanza for um, Hush Hush. And it's actually an interesting story. So another reason why I really wasn't – too nervous. Mm -hmm. I had met Richard uh, a year plus prior. So I had actually in this whole swinger and things um, and sending off the pictures to the magazine, we actually kind of started reaching out to other adult performers. Okay, you know what? Let's, let's try filming your own stuff. And so we ended up filming basically a feature mm -hmm. um like with a like dialogue and like di a dialogue everything it was a great story um and totally uh, like amateur filmed but we contacted richard mann so wait did you hire like a crew or did you guys film it yourself we filmed it ourselves and then hired the guys so hired richard mann danny black and little freak okay and flew them in kind of you know set him up in a hotel and it was like a three day it was a three day shoot lots of dialogue there was um the three boy girls and then there was a, a three on one mm -hmm. a finale i guess mm -hmm. you could say well since i had already filmed with richard technically being on uh, on set with him for my first pro scene was probably maybe the best way I could get into it because I already knew him. Yeah. I already knew his personality. I already knew how big his cock was. Yeah. <laughs> and to have my first scene, an anal IR scene. Wow. That it, was your first scene? <laughs> Damn. I, yeah. You yeah were but I, I had already, it. I mean, I had already fucked. I mean, Danny's black, you know, little freak's black. I just mean so, I just mean anal. Oh, the anal. Yeah, well, I had been doing anal through the. the, I, I, the no, I forget you were the swingers you were a girl already. What am I saying? <laughs> but I was a late bloomer for my whole anal thing. But yeah, um, 
but no, the first the first scene went. It was so much fun, and you know, I just and it's like yes, you always remember your first scene, mm-hmm. but you know when you've got someone like Richard, he's such a down to earth, just really cool dude, and mm-hmm. he just kind of our friendship. We we had that friendship kept in contact, and it was just like two friends getting together, and you know, memories took in and took over, and. Yeah, you just yeah. It's like riding a bike. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yes. So then, how did your career trajectory continue after that? After that, um, because I it it stayed actually even to this day very consistent. Um, you know, it's like I do this more or less part time because I still live in Seattle. Mm-hmm. I've always lived in Seattle, and it just kind of I don't want to say took off, but I came in as a MILF, started with that label. Mm-hmm. Um, so as things go on, and then of course having my first scene in anal scene, that already opened the door for that. So the I was back doing door more for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I just started doing that, and then the the mom stuff. Yeah. Came in, and that just all kind of went into that, and stayed pretty much the the gang bangs, boy girl, um, anal, all of that. My first girl girl scene wasn't until I was th- three or four years in the industry. Wow. Four years in the industry. Did you, had you, because it sounds like even in your personal life, you were mostly having sex with men. Did you like women at all or? I considered myself maybe bi curious. Okay. So, did, you know, my first uh, experience with a woman, I was actually in my, my early 20s. I was 21. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that was a lot of fun, mm-hmm. and I en- I enjoyed her, mm-hmm. um, enjoyed my time and everything. We were actually coworkers, <laughs> mm. uh, but isn't that how we meet? Like most of our friends yeah. and partners yeah, is, yeah, yeah. is through work, and, uh, and then just life situations. I really didn't get back into playing with another woman until my mid thirties ish. And that was through swinging and and all of that. But it didn't really hit until I started doing Girl Girl and got to really appreciate being with a woman. And it's like, okay, I'm not, I'm, I'm bi. I'm, yeah. I'm not curious. It's like women are beautiful. They're sexual. I love how they they, they feel and they're soft and, yeah. and they're sensual and guys are great and they're animalistic. And, and it's like, why wouldn't you want both right so. yeah no i hear you yeah. um it's like every time someone says that i absolutely appreciate that and it sounds lovely but i am like i am not into chicks at all <laughs> like people are always surprised by that you know because like i work in porn and i'm just like i just yeah. i don't know like I, and i've had a couple of experiences with women but mm-hmm. it was fun but not just didn't but then again i mean you are you're having sex for a living and you're working with like professional women right right? so you're working with now you're having sex with like the best of the best yeah i am now and which is nice and i mean i'll still play there have been a couple uh swingers that i've i've played with Mm -hmm. even now and and they're wonderful women and i you know adore them dearly um but the industry has definitely been good for the best of the best Mm -hmm. um i've met uh, my partners now mm-hmm. to the industry kind of sort of okay. so <laughs> so how did so how did that happen <laughs> um well i've when i divorced um had met a gentleman that was kind of a in how do i explain it he was a swinger mm-hmm. but was also on set as extra okay so he was kind of an in between semi pro kind of guy but anyway um and so that's how i met him so he was an extra a non-sex extra on a porn set both uh, for kink.com okay and because they would they would have like their upper floor parties for members and things like that so he would be a tested a tested extra right gotcha um and so that was like him and then as things go on I start. I meet D Williams mm-hmm. also through kink.com, 
we had a scene together and then the very like that right after the scene she was like do you want to go out with me <laughs> <laughs> and i'm and this was kind of in like my beginnings of really embracing my bisexuality mm -hmm. and i'm like yeah because we had just an out of this world scene um we actually have a story that's titled love at first fist <laughs> um so but that's that's a story for another day that's that's a very it's a it's a cute story but a long story um and we've been together ever since and we're heading on to like nine years together wow yeah. so you guys are actually a couple we are well a thruple i guess right kind you of have another part yeah well and it's yeah and this is where i've i've found poly or polyamory mm -hmm. um that oh my god that's me that's that's like that's me you know and um with the swinger background and you know the my previous partner being a swinger and and doing all of that and meeting dean she's Polly and she's married now and then i had you know my one boyfriend and then we, sometimes we would play together and sometimes it's separate so it's it's an interesting poly dynamic so mm -hmm. we don't all live together but we the love is there the feelings are there right and then um and then i met my current man <laughs> who was also kind of sort of it, through the industry but not so basically i was flying to my one but this is going to be so confusing i'm sorry guys um flying to go see my one boyfriend in san francisco mm -hmm. and my current was on that same flight mm. so i kind of met him in through around about six degrees of separation i guess through the industry oh wow interesting <laughs> so it's kind of complicated i guess so how does your thruple relationship work then or is it you and d are a thing and then you and your current partner are a thing do you mix them together or d and him dating on their own like you know what i'm saying like because i know everybody has different rules right right so d and i are a couple mm -hmm. and then i do have a relationship with her husband matt okay um so there's so it's like we the three of us will play mm -hmm. she will go out of town or work and then i'll i'll go and keep him company mm -hmm. so we do things together mm -hmm. um play so we're kind of a couple together mm -hmm. and then my partner will like when he's so he and i are close he is also poly so he's had other relationships and other partners alongside but separate mm -hmm. so when it comes to d and i he'll come play with us or the three of us mm -hmm. so d i and matt okay and then but he wouldn't go and play with d without you there generally hasn't yet okay it's kind of like i mean <laughs> you know it's funny i'm asking for you to like explain this dynamic but as i'm listening to you talk it makes you realize it's really just like how groups of friends work right absolutely like you have your groups of friends and then you introduce like two people and they really get along and then yeah. like the three of you start hanging out yes and like your two friends that you introduced like might hang out without you at some point but like mm -hmm. who you know what i mean like who knows but it's always like because we include sex in this we get caught up on those details i guess a little bit a little bit sex i mean sex can confuse things it can gray things but it also can make things a little simpler mm. and a little more dynamic and and special one thing that I've heard from other people who are in poly relationships is that one of the most rewarding things about it is that you're not putting all of the pressure on one partner to be everything to you, right? Right. Like that kind of, that can be shared and spread among Absolutely. multiple people because it is a lot, I think, to ask. And, and I'm in a monogamous relationship and we're very happy with that. Um, but I, I think I've realized this just in terms of like, you know, my relationship with him and then like friends and other people in my life that, you know, a lot of times we think that our partner has to be everything to us, right? They have to like be our protector and like, you know, our emotional support and, you know, our intimate partner and like, you know, just everything. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's a lot to put on one person. It and is. then when other people could pick up those roles and you could feel supported yeah. among yeah. more than one 
person. Humans, humans are very complicated. Yeah. Intelligence brings in that complication. It also yeah. brings in change all the time. We are constantly picking up things, learning things, changing. Yeah. And it makes it hard to find that one person to be the 100%. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult for both sides. So it's a lot of pressure on your partner and then also on you because you have your expectations but then they don't know they can't always live up to yeah. it so yeah it's like my happiest time of my life is bringing in these other people because these other people fill the void that the main partner isn't able to do yeah 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 gotcha so um you are as you've mentioned a a, a milf in the industry I'm a milf in the industry what yeah. makes a good milf in your opinion <laughs> You know, I would say someone that is true to themselves, mm. that knows themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, going back, it takes a long time to, like, really figure out who you are. Um, 20s are great. It's full of, of trials and tribulations and experimentation. But I feel that you really don't find yourself until a little later in life when you get into that MILF status, I guess. Mm -hmm. So MILFs are generally very confident. They're independent, very sexual. They enjoy sex for sex. Mm -hmm. um, they know how to make the situations even better. So it's like when you're younger, you're like, okay, I'm just, I'm not quite sure. So I'm just going to lay here mm -hmm. and hope that I orgasm. When you're a MILF, you're like, mm-mm. Life's too short. I know how to angle my body. I know how to tilt or twist or whatever to hit those spots because you know where those spots are. Yeah. And maybe you have the confidence to ask things of your partner to help you get there, right? Yes. And the confidence to say, hey, you know what? This isn't right. Right. The, the, let's, let's do this instead. Yeah. And yeah. So that's, I think that's probably in a nutshell what I think a good MILF yeah. is. Yeah. I would say for me, I love MILFs because they are on time. They, <laughs> they, they have read the script. Yes. They bring their wardrobe. <laughs> they yes. are incorporated. Responsible. They are responsible. <laughs> yes. they, they respond to my questions when I text them about something. Yeah. 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 I'm always like. Yeah. You know, when I get like a MILF movie, I'm like, oh, great. Everyone's going to be on time. And They're going to have read so their easy. lines. Yes. It's going to be great. <laughs> that is that is all true. Yes. <laughs> now. Keep going, I think, is another really good, you know, we kind of. Yeah. We pick our battles. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Um, so as a MILF, I'm sure you get cast in, you know, a lot of the same kind of kinds of roles, right? Um, there's been some. Mm -hmm. Uh, interesting different like kinks and uh, niches and stuff that have come up oh yes um, over the last <laughs> decade or so what is the most ridiculous premise for a scene you've ever shot one there's two okay great I want to hear both one one comes to mind so I was doing a boy girl mm -hmm. cub milf right with the sex doll so it was kind of a a boy girl plastic girl Oh, okay. So there was there was a real person in the scene. Yeah. It wasn't just you and a sex doll. No. Gotcha. So there was a yeah, me me and the guy and then a sex doll <laughs> that we had to incorporate and make it a boy girl girl. Interesting. <laughs> so that was probably the most interesting. Yeah. Kind of way out there idea, yeah. but I like those ideas. I like to have fun on my scenes and laugh and giggle and and just, oh my God, this is so stupid. We're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> but like it because yeah. it's different. Yeah. And then what about the other one? The other one was pillow humping. Yeah, that's a thing. It is a thing. And I'm going, really? Really? We're doing this? Okay. All what, right. Well, we'll do it. What do you think that's from? I have probably when, adolescence, I think. Yep. Yeah. Because, I mean, I <clears throat> masturbated when I was three. Um <laughs> So, I mean, I get that. And it's yeah. the, the experimentation. You, oh, well, this feels good. Yeah. But you don't really know how to like. Yeah. And a pillow is really is like, it's soft. Yeah. It's cushy, but it supports. Yeah. And it, you know, and when you grind on it. Yeah. It'll, 
I mean, it, it rubs the, the clitoris and yeah. I mean it, you know, so I can I see think, how it. I don't it, think I ever did that, but I think no, you're right. I, I didn't. think it's I, where it comes from. I have a hand. <laughs> <laughs> In what way has the industry changed the most over the uh, past 18 years that you've been in it? Oh, so many, so many things, so many things. I've seen it go from, I'll say it's heyday where we were VHS and feature films to sliding into DVDs, which offset a lot of financials, which then goes into internet, which offset a lot of things as well. Um, so there is that side of it, the technology. Um, porn has always been, the adult industry has always been on the forefront of those tech, uh, technological details or changes as we go on, which yeah. I think is amazing. Yeah. Um, we're, we're very viable. We're, we're adaptable. Um, other things, I mean, you always see girls come and go, boys come and go. That really hasn't changed. Um, I have seen the industry go from still professional, but maybe not completely professional. Mm -hmm. um, a lot more easygoing on sets to strictly professional on how we are right now. Mm -hmm. And would you say that that is better? Like, do you think that we're in like the best like time in porn right now? We are in that road to it mm. you know you kind of when you deal with change it's always kind of that you you change you find the chaos and then chaos slides away to the best environments mm -hmm. and we're past the chaos and sliding into i don't think we're quite we haven't quite found that middle ground of the two sides mm -hmm. what what would you like to see change in the industry that you think would make it better um We've we've kind of gotten into, and this is going to sound bad, but into a selfish state. Mm -hmm. um, it is. It's kind of kind of what I said earlier about. It's all about me, me, me. Mm -hmm. um, the lack of respect to others. Mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing is kind of hurting us, and I would like to have that come back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like. It's not, it's not all about you. I mean, we are a smaller industry, but there are many other people around you that your actions can affect them mm -hmm. one way or the other. So once we kind of spread our bubble out again, I think it'll be a little bit better. I love the professionalism. I think that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, just temper it a little bit to where we don't feel like we're walking on eggshells all I, the time. Okay, I know what you mean. You feel like... And, and I think I, I understand, like, s some people are maybe a little bit too, like, I don't know if extreme is the right word, but, you know, there's a lot of... Closed off a lot of times yeah. is kind of what I feel, and it's... Okay. And could it be social skills? Yeah. You know, the difference of how I grew up compared to how someone who's 20 or in their 20s, you know, they, they grow up completely different. Our worlds are completely different. Mm -hmm. Things are so much scarier nowadays mm -hmm. um, that, you know, it's it's hard to like branch out. I understand that. Yeah. Um, my last question for you is on the Expos Res... Okay, we're gonna cut. <laughs> the Expos Red, red Carpet. <laughs> Catch you. Start again. <laughs> <clears throat> On the Xmas red carpet, I asked you for your best advice to new girls. Mm -hmm. And it was, you said to know when to stand up for yourself and to voice your concerns early. Is that a lesson that you learned from experience? No. I've actually have been very lucky in, I mean, really my life um, throughout and then especially through the adult industry. I've been very lucky. Um, I haven't had any bad situations um, have seen through the industry um, how some have and have not my teacher history mm. my personality I like it's like I'm I'm mom to everybody I like to teach people um, I'm also good at looking at the big picture and good at naturally at psychology mm -hmm. so and I see that the young girls as we have 
are very insecure and don't want to say something because they're afraid that it'll hurt the other person's feelings or that it might hinder or hurt their career. So they don't say anything. But then they wait three years and then all of a sudden they say something. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's been so long. It's like you question that um, validity. Mm -hmm. Is it the truth? Is it not the truth? So say it right then and there. It, it's straightforward. It's in the forefront. Fix it right when it happens. People know where they stand with you. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's definitely something that probably is easier to do with age. Yes. And, I think, and it is. Yeah. And, and that's, you coming into the industry later, you were already like a woman confident in herself, right. right? You had had all these sexual experiences with other people. So you probably felt comfortable navigating that. Yes. Telling people what you're okay with and what you're not okay with. And passing on that wisdom to yeah. the the young people is don't be afraid to say something. Yeah. Just, you know, I mean, there's a good way to say it and a poor way to say it. Yeah. You know, so I mean, still be respectful, but you know, it's like, hey, you know what? We didn't discuss this, or hey, I don't like this, or mm -hmm. just be your, be yourself and just communicate. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, Siren, thank you so much for coming. Thank on. you for having me. This was fun. Very, very <laughs> appreciative. Can you let everybody know where they can find you online? Absolutely. I am on X at Siren Demer XXX. I have um, a Facebook account, actually. Also, I've got an account and a fan page at Siren Demer. Uh, my fan email is siren at sinfulsiren.com. And then, of course, I have my OnlyFans, too. <laughs> and uh, your Yahoo group? No, I'm just kidding. My <laughs> Yahoo group? You know what? It's actually funny. I kind of looked at my uh, Yahoo group. Those are gone. So you can't <laughs> find me on Yahoo. Um, I did actually look at MySpace just to see if my account was still there. It is actually still there, but there's nothing on it. Interesting. I didn't yeah. even know MySpace. Who the fuck is on MySpace? I don't think anybody is anymore, but the site is still... It's still there? Uh-huh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Anyways, you guys can find me not on MySpace, but I don't Maybe my account is still there. I used to be on there. But uh, you'd be better off looking for me on Instagram, at Holly Randall, on Twitter, or X, at Holly Randall. And of course, if you want to support this podcast and watch these episodes streamed live and get access to bonus content, go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered. Go to hollylinks.com for access to all of my platforms. Um, you can find it all there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and see you next week.